Hello, I'm Deacon Steve Gretzinger, and I'm here once again with Father Corey Litzner from the Diocese of Marquette. And we're talking Consecration 101. Well, that's not really not our official name, but we're going with that until we come up with something better. Um, 340 years ago, our Lord appeared just like this with his heart exposed to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. And uh, he basically said, Behold this heart, which is loved so much, so many, and in return been treated with coldness, indifference, and ingratitude. And then he went on over the course of two years to reveal to St. Margaret Mary some promises. You love me, you honor me, and guess what? I'm going to give you something else. And like Jackie always says, my wife Jackie always says, it's like the old carrot and the stick. Our Lord really knows what makes us tick. He knows that by us loving him more and giving us something, then we love him more and stuff. And it kind of goes back and forth, but it's, we win. I mean, all we, it costs us is to love our, our Lord even more. Yeah. Now, those promises that we talk about, are there only 12 promises, Father Corey? No, there's not. And by the way, you should listen to Jackie more. She's very wise. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's very true. <laughs> so many promises? There, there's actually many, many promises. Our Lord made many promises. But um, after, after all the, the revelations were done, they were consolidated um, for people-friendly purposes into 12 promises. Okay. Now, these were only for 340 years ago. These promises were only for that time frame? Of course not. Oh, Steve. I knew that answer, but I wanted you to share it. <laughs> Our Lord, as Hebrew says, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what does that mean? That means he's God. He's not bound by time. So if he made those promises 340 years ago, they're just as valid today as they were back then. Excellent. Are you going to share some of the promises or break them apart? Start sure. Start pulling them apart? Okay. Sure. We're going to be talking a little bit more in depth about a few of the promises, but I want to just bring out the um, some of the promises. And Oh my goodness. I always say this is where the rubber meets the road, right? Number one, I will give them all the graces necessary for their state in life. What does that mean, graces? Graces necessary for their state in life. So they can live their state in life well. As Matthew Kelly says, to be the best version of themselves. So whatever your state life, would that be like as a priest, a deacon, a husband, wife? Exactly. Single person? Okay. Single person. Okay. Yeah. And our exactly. Lord says, by honoring this heart, I'm going, I promise you this, I'm going to give you that grace you need wherever you're at, whatever you're doing. Exactly. Okay. Number two, I will give peace in their families. Pieces? Because our family has lots of pieces. Is that what he meant? <laughs> <laughs> no. And he, <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't mean the uh, vegetable peas either. No, okay, all right. That's all totally different. <laughs> he says, I will give them peace, the peace that the world cannot give. He will give in families. And I always tell people when I'm talking about this that if your family has peace, I'm sure you can tell me that it needs a lot more peace. And you know what? That's one of the promises that our Lord made and continues to make if we honor him in the sacred heart. So does a whole family have to be honoring him to get that peace? No. Of course not. No. Right? Okay. You can do it for your for your family members, maybe those who will, who, who make you struggle with peace sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, here's what I like. It's almost like that offer like you see on the infomercials, but wait, there's more. You don't just get those two promises. What else do we got, Father Corey? Well, <laughs> Mr. Popeil, <laughs> I will console them in all their troubles. Wow. And notice he doesn't say, I'm going to take all their troubles away, right? That's huge. He says, I will console them in all their troubles. I will give them the grace and the strength to carry their crosses each and every day to follow me. And there's just one more promise that I, I want to point out, Deacon Steve. Number 10, I will give to priests the power to touch the most hardened of hearts. Does that mean hardened arteries? Because I know that's... That's different? No. Okay. Sounds <laughs> good. And, and I'm, I'm looking at you, not because I think you have a heart and heart, but well, because you. I'm actually talking to you. Yeah. But basically, I take, the reason I take such consolation out of that is because our Lord is saying that he chooses weak instruments. He doesn't choose people to, because they're worthy to be priests. He chooses weak instruments to communicate his grace through our ministry. And he chooses someone like myself. And I know because of that promise, and like we were talking before, Jesus cannot lie, yeah. that if I'm doing my ministry, that I can touch the hardest of hearts, the hardest of sinners. And I have. I don't want to go into the details uh -huh. of that, but I, I'm just 
I just have such consolation in, in, in such confidence in my priestly ministry just because of that, that 10th promise. So all you priests out there, if you're having trouble reaching some of your people, honor this heart. And for all the other people, we'll be back in our next segment. Thank you.